In this video, we're going to look at the male side of the human reproductive system. The organs of the male reproductive system include the penis and the testes. Inside the testes, there's long coiled tubes called seminiferous tubules. It's inside these tubules where sperm are formed. Once the sperm are formed, they're stored in the epididymis on top of the testes. From the epididymis, the sperm will travel up a tube called the vas deferens. This is the tube that's cut during a vasectomy. The vas deferens comes up around the bladder and joins into the urethra. Along the way, fluids are added to produce the semen. The seminal vesicles behind the bladder secrete mucus, amino acids, fructose for energy, and prostaglandins, which will initiate uterine contractions, into the seminal fluid. The prostate gland in the upper portion of the urethra secretes an alkaline fluid that balances the acidity of the vagina, and the bulbo urethra gland contrib contributes additional fluid. This fluid is carried out of the body through the urethra to be expelled. To take a closer look at sperm production, we need to go inside the kidney, uh, inside the, the testes. Spermatogenesis is the, is the production of sperm. In spermatogenesis, inside the seminiferous tubules, if we look over here, if we go inside the, the testes and we look at a single seminiferous tubule, and then we look inside of that tubule over here, we see there are a series of cells that are undergoing mitotic divisions to produce more cells. After a while, we get to the primary spermatocyte. The primary spermatocyte will generate sperm. We know that sperm is a gamete, and gametes have to be haploid. But the primary spermatocyte is a diploid cell, so it must undergo the process of meiosis. Meiosis is two rounds of, of cellular division that results in four haploid cells that we call spermatids. These spermatids mature into sperm. This entire process is under the control of certain hormones. Let's look at the hormones that regulate the male reproductive cycle. In the brain, in the hypothalamus, gonadotropin-releasing hormone is secreted. The gonadotropin-releasing hormone stimulates the pituitary gland to release LH and FSH. LH and FSH circulate in the blood and target cells inside the testes. FSH, or follicle stimulating hormone, stimulates the sperm production in the testes. Luteinizing hormone, also produced by the pituitary gland, stimulates the output of testosterone by the testes. The testosterone produced by the interstitial cells inside the seminiferous tubules are necessary for sperm production, and they're also responsible for secondary sex traits. These testosterones, or androgens, are pr first produced during embryonic development. The secondary sex traits are, are the levels of testosterone allow for secondary sex traits, like the growth of the larynx, provide, uh, resulting in a deeper voice, the increase in skeletal size, body hair, uh, and sweat glands and oil secreting glands. Secondary sex traits are characteristics associated with sex hormones, but aren't directly involved in reproduction. In other animals, they include things like antlers or a lion's mane, or the uh, large plumes of plumage in birds. In humans, it results in uh, facial hair, uh, deepening of the voice, um, growth of muscles and bones. Let's watch this short animation showing the interaction of the hormones involved in the male reproductive system. the testes. The hypothalamus, the part of the brain just above the pituitary gland, controls hormone production under the influence of other parts of the brain. The hypothalamus produces a releasing hormone that regulates the secretion of follicle stimulating hormone, FSH, and luteinizing hormone, LH, from the anterior pituitary. FSH stimulates sperm production by the testes. LH stimulates the testes to secrete androgens, male sex hormones. Testosterone is the most important androgen secreted by the testes. Androgens shape the development of the male reproductive system. They stimulate sperm production and trigger development of secondary sex characteristics such as beard growth. Negative feedback regulates the function of the male reproductive system. An increase in testosterone and other androgens inhibits the brain and pituitary, decreasing secretion of releasing hormone and LH.
This in turn reduces androgen secretion. A drop in androgens allows the brain and pituitary to stimulate the testes, maintaining optimum androgen levels. So, if we recap, the hypothalamus produce, produces GnRH, the gonadotropin releasing hormone, which stimulates the pituitary to release FSH and LH. FSH stimulates the testes to pr start producing sperm, and LH stimulates the testes to produce testosterone. That testosterone, in turn, allows for sperm production and also results in our secondary sex traits. There's a negative feedback loop here, however, where the levels of testosterone go up, it starts to inhibit the pituitary and the hypothalamus from releasing FSH and LH. Therefore, we get a drop in testosterone to level. If testosterone levels drop, then we start releasing FSH and LH again, and so this system is self-regulating. So, what is it that you need to know? You need to know the basic anatomy of the male reproductive system in mammals. You need to know that it's in the testes where the sperm is produced, and specifically in the seminiferous tubules, and that those, that sperm is stored in the epididymis and delivered via the vas deferens to eventually the urethra, along the way getting fluid added by the accessory glands. You need to know that sperm production inside the seminiferous tubules occurs through meiosis for a diploid cell to produce haploid sperm. And we'll talk more about the structure of the sperm when we talk about the fertilization event later in the, uh, in the unit. We also need to know about the hormonal regulation of the system, where the hormones of the hypothalamus, the pituitary, and the testes interact to regulate sperm production and secondary sex traits.